As you might know, while I was creating the first version of my electric longboard, I utilized a simple RF transmitter and RF receiver to create a wireless connection. You can get those inexpensively from eBay and by simply powering them with a 5V power source and connecting a signal to the transmitter, we can pick up the same signal from the receiver. Back then, this simple connection was sufficient for the first version of my motorized longboard. But as soon as I started working on an improved version, I went with another wireless communication IC, the NRF24L01+. Those can also be bought for cheap from eBay, but they offer a lot more setting options and also allow transmission between both modules, instead of the one-way road of the old modules. Because of that, they gradually became my favorite way of wireless communication. But as time passed, some viewers started to ask whether I could test the LoRa wireless communication method. So in this video, we're going to find out what LoRa is, how easy it is to use with an Arduino, and compare it to the other two mentioned wireless communication techniques regarding the transmission range and power consumption. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. JLC PCB boards are widely used in the industrial, aerospace and medical fields, as well as DIY projects. Upload your Gerber files to order high quality PCBs for low prices. When we search for LoRa on eBay, then we can easily find a couple of different development boards. I went with this comparatively expensive RFM95W board, which according to its datasheet features the patented LoRa modulation technique. It transmits at a frequency of 868 MHz, while the simple RF modules used 433 MHz and the NRF24 2.4 GHz. All those frequencies lie in the ISM band aka industrial, scientific, medical bands, which in most countries is free to use. And if you're curious on how all those boards manage to transmit wirelessly, then better buy a book or two about the subject, since it is not simple and definitely beyond the scope of this video. But anyway, once I received my two LoRa boards, which by the way stands for long range, I immediately did a Google search to find out that there already exists an Arduino library with example sketches and a wiring description. So I created a dozen of small wire pieces and used them to connect the pins of an Arduino Pro Mini to the LoRa board, according to the wiring description. And because it was an absolutely not tedious task, I repeated this process a second time to create the receiver to which I also soldered an LED with current limiting resistor, whose function I will explain later. To program and power the boards, I also added a 6-pin female header to each, to which I then connected a USB to serial converter boards set to 3.3V. This is important since the LoRa boards can only handle 3.3V and its pins are not 5V tolerant, like the NRF24 ones. Last but not least, I uploaded the transmitter example sketch to one board and the example receiver sketch to the other boards and opened the receiver serial monitor to find out that the communication worked flawlessly. Next, I edited the receiver codes by utilizing the timer one library so that the LED will light up whenever the board receives data but also automatically turns off every second. That means, after uploading the codes, that as long as the LED blinks, we got a successful wireless connection to the transmitter, which means this setup was ready for the range test. But for proper comparison between all the mentioned RF modules, I also built an NRF24 receiver and transmitter by using two more Arduino Pro Minis and a final transmitter and receiver pair with the generic RF modules and two Arduino Nanos. For the codes, I utilized the TMRH20 library for the NRF24s and the virtual wire library for the generic RF modules. 
And as you can see, according to the LED, the NRF24 wireless connection worked without a problem. But you could not say the same about the generic RF module setup. There seems to be a problem with the Timer 1 library. So we must observe the small TX LED to determine if we got a successful connection. So I grabbed my laptop and a power bank and started the outdoor experiment. There I used my laptop to firstly power the transmitter of the NRF24 system and simply started walking away in an open field with the corresponding receiver. And not very surprisingly, after only 5 meters the LED started to exchange. And after around 10 meters it did not want to light up at all anymore. Next was the generic RF module, to which I soldered a helical spiral antenna beforehand. With this setup it was possible to walk a bit further, approximately around 10 meters before the LED started acting strange and around 25 meters before it did not light up at all. That means it was time for the LoRa setup, to which I attached the antennas of the generic RF modules before I started the test. During the first round we got a distance of 90 meters before the LED started acting strange and around 140 meters before the system stopped receiving data. And if you hold the transmitter up into the air, then you can easily get a range of around 300 meters before the LED starts acting strange. So all in all, LoRa wears its name rightfully. And if I cut the power lines of all the transmitters and receivers and measure the current consumption of each, then the result would look something like this. The NRF24 would require the most current with 14 mA during receiving, but almost nothing during sending. Next comes the LoRa setup with a current consumption of 10 mA during receiving and sending. And finally the generic RF modules, with the lowest current consumption of 2.9 mA during receiving and around 0.3 mA during sending. The last thing we must keep in mind when deciding for a communication method for a project is the data transfer rate. The generic one only offers 4 kilobits per second, while the LoRa version offers up to 37.5 kilobits per second and the NRF24 IC up to 2 megabits per second. So we can conclude that LoRa with its long range does offer interesting project implementation possibilities that I will more elaborately explore in the future, but it is certainly not the solution to all wireless projects. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.